third time these teams have ever met. The series now tied one win apiece after last Thursday's overtime victory for UNC Charlotte. All right, we're underway, and the Cardinals will get the first crack at things. This is Keith Legree, the freshman that'll set the offense in motion. Holden thought about it and then backed away as Odom had things pretty well covered in the paint. Minor over to Morton and now back to Cornelius Holden as the cards have the shot clock down inside 15 seconds. It's down to 10 seconds. The shot goes up by Morton. It's good. That's a big shot. We really need to get a shot out of the box. Get some basket going in. Well, Dwayne Morton hits the first shot for the Cardinals, and they're up two to nothing very quickly. They played inside a minute here in the first half at Freedom Hall. And the Cards come up with a turnover, and now they have the break over to Holden. Here's Miner. He got it. So it's a quick four to nothing lead for U of L. Now this is Henry Williams, number 34. He's averaging just about 20 points a game for the 49ers. Over to Terrell and back to Williams. He drives on Legree, can't get the shot. They lofted it inside, up and in, off the left. There you see they tried both times to get the ball inside. They really want to establish an inside game. That's exactly what you talked about in our game plan for three. It's no good by Miner. Odom with a rebound. U of L leads us four to two. And Henry Williams will guide things along for the 49ers of Jeff Mullen. That's uh, two turnovers. So Dotton gets the foul. That's his first foul of the game. On either team. So Louisville, 4 2 lead, 17.50 to go. Great to Martin and now to Miner. Legree inside. Batted away by Rodney Odom. Good interior defense by the big guy. Odom had 20 blocks on the air coming in tonight. He's out of Kingwood, Texas. There's the first three attempt of the night by Williams. It's off the mark. That's what they like to do, put it up from behind the three-point line. And as a team... I don't know about that shot. Well, Holden comes out and nails a three-point shot to give the Cards a five-point lead. Well, we talked about confidence, and that's obviously confidence to see the big guy, Holden, shoot a three from out there. The Cards are shooting 50% here early, three out of six from the field. Dotton is fouled as he goes up with a shot. Morton is going to be tagged with a foul. That is the first on sophomore Dwayne Morton out of Central High School here in Louisville. You can see on that last play, right here you see it coming up on the screen, two guys going after the ball. And that's aggressive play, and that's something they're going to have to do more of. Now the Cardinals crashing on the board. They foul on Morton. And at the line, it is Malru Dotton, number three. He's got the two points in the game right now. Dotton hits only 49% of his free throws. What can you say about Holden firing for three? Confidence. That's the name of the game. You're here to play basketball, and I guess the coach said, hey, go out and have fun, and that is fun. Now Rue Dotton hits one out of two, and it's 7-3. Louisville is leading by four. And with the basketball. Minor to Morton. You see the clock now in the first half, moving down around the 16-and-a-half-minute mark. Louisville trying to break a two-game losing streak. Lost to these 49ers last week in overtime and UCLA on Sunday. Foul on Odom, number one on Rodney Odom. Odom kind of got his back turned a little bit on that play and just kind of ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. He submitted the foul, backing into the guy. 
That is the first foul on Odom and the second team foul. Everett Sullivan misfires for three. The ball will go to UNC Charlotte as Denny Crum looks on from the bench. The last foul is on number 43, Rodney Odom, rather than 34, Williams. Foul is on Odom, number 43. And now it is uh, UNC Charlotte trying to trim the U of L four-point lead at seven to three. Just about 16 minutes left here in the first half. Cotton driving on Miner, got it. He's got all the points for UNC Charlotte. The big strong guy really took it to the basket strong that time. Cotton. Cotton makes it a seven-five game. Louisville leading by two with the ball. See, Louisville's not in a traditional high post offense. They're trying to get more movement with the basketball, giving guys a little more freedom to play out on the floor. Shot clock inside 20 seconds. We got a foul. That's on uh, UNC Charlotte. And that's the second one on number 43, Rodney Odom. So very quickly in the first four and a half minutes of the game, Odom picks up two fouls. Back to Freedom Hall after this timeout. Spanish should really look forward to this tournament coming here. And teams like UNC Charlotte ranked in the top 20. Tulane also in the top 20 out of the Metro Conference. You see the shooting. Well, that's a different set that we don't get to see much around here. They stack two guys low on each side. Every Sullivan just curls right around, makes a great pass to Greg Miner to get some balls up at the basket because he's one of the guys that really can score better. It's out of bounds, and it'll go to UNC Charlotte. Well, Miner averaging just a shade over 10 points a game. He has three of the eight points that Louisville has on the scoreboard now. Williams always dangerous in that three-point circle, and he's going to come back as they've got Miner on Williams. Now Terrell. Dotton gets another basket. That's seven. Way more. He got there just a little bit late, trying to give good weak side help, but he was not watching the basketball. He caused him to get there a little bit late. It's eight to seven, and Dotton has all of the points for UNC Charlotte. They are pounded in it, the ball inside, just like Coach Mullen talked about. They're trying to establish an inside game. Terrell and Williams, the two hot shooting guards, have yet to score in this first half. We've played five and a half minutes here at Freedom Hall. The shot clock at 15 seconds. Holden makes a move on Bowley, and he can't go with it. They're going to call a tie-up. And the possession arrow goes to the 49ers. Holden had no place to go with that one. He gave a nice up fade. He probably should have shot the ball when he first got it. He turned and faced, had about a nice 8 to 10 footer down there on the baseline. Wanted to get a little bit closer, and uh, committed a ill-advised play there. So the turnover gives the ball now to UNC Charlotte. Johnson is in the game, Delano Johnson. And he'll make things happen when he comes in the game. Dotton misses one. Bowley, no good. Bowley again. Lost the handle. Agree, threw it away into traffic. The transition basket, as they talked about in the early in the show. They want to get a lot of those. Showtime for Henry Williams, and for the first time tonight, UNC Charlotte is in the lead. And they got the rebound. Here they come again, really looking to get baskets. Use the opportunities. Transition game underway, Williams. And he couldn't get that one to go down, so Louisville trying to get back into the lead, down by a point. 13-24, first half, Freedom Hall. David Sullivan and Derek Smith with you here tonight. As the Cardinals, who have struggled with their shooting eye this season, try to get a hot night under their belt. Martin comes up with it. Fires it back to Everett Sullivan. That's those quick hands of Dwayne, really staying active all the time around the basketball, able to come back up with that loose ball. Back to Martin, makes a move. 
Can't get the shot to fall. You would see Charlotte knocked away and the foul. Probably got Dwayne on the reach there. He reached in and tried to get it from behind. And uh, they're going to get you more times than that. When you reach in that distance, they're going to call it. You can watch Dwayne coming into the pitcher. He's going to take a swipe at it. There he is right there. They're going to get you more times than that. Well, they got him on that one. That's a second on Martin, the second team foul on Louisville as Dotton goes to the bench for UNC Charlotte. Kip Stone is up off the bench, and Brian Hopgood is into the game for Louisville. Hopgood, number 43. As Holden goes over to the bench, and Derwin Webb is also on the bench and into the game for Louisville. A whistle and a foul. on UNC Charlotte. They are trying to take that basketball inside, whether it's Golden or whoever. They're just trying to get the ball in and draw some fouls. As you see Dwayne Martin going out of the game uh, with his second early on here. They put that foul on Hopgood. Over and back, it'll be Louisville's ball. Delano Johnson called a spark plug, the sixth man off the bench. Another one of those little guys who looked to shoot the three. He's a good shooter. Level is trailing by a point at nine to eight. First half. Hop good. He looks like a scorer. I mean, this guy walks around campus with a big smile on his face saying, give me the basketball. He puts it in the hole. He loves to shoot. He's hitting almost 70% of his shots from the field this season. That one put Louisville back in front by a point. He also broke a drought. We've been down the court six times without getting the basket. Stone leads him on the break to Derwin. Collision <laughs> inside. They're calling an offensive foul on Derwin Webb. That happens a lot to Derwin. He's one of those guys that when he gets going full speed, he goes straight ahead. And as you can see here, the guy's already there. He's set. And uh, that's definitely going to be an offensive foul. We'll be back in just a press and leading this game 10 to 9 over UNCC. Here's the rebound, and Charlotte has been hitting the boards hard. They lead that battle. Kip Stone smacks it out of bounds. We've got to get some, Louisville's got to get some front line guys to get near the boards. They really. Keep Legree is one of the few guys in there fighting and blocking guys out and trying to crash. Those bigger guys are going to have to give him some help. Kip Stone made a good play there, and it's out of bounds, inbounds play. Duvall, and he kicks it outside to Delano Johnson. James Terrell asking for the ball, number 12. Paired against Derwin Webb. Here's Henry Williams. He's got two points so far. Got to throw that one up. Kipstone. He's fouled. We've got 11.09 to go in the first half. Kipstone hits them both. Louisville leads by three at 12 to nine. Coach Crum has four reserves in there. Only every seven remaining from the starting five. And these reserves have played reasonably well, even though the team has struggled. These guys have come in on many nights and given them a left, and hopefully they can come in tonight and uh, continue to play well. Malru Dotton, who has scored seven of the nine points for UNCC back into the game. Here's Terrell. They shut him off. Williams. That's an NBA three right there. That's probably where that little guy's going to be next year. He's an outstanding player, Williams. Passes into Hopgood, and he is fouled and will go to the line. Ryan Hopgood. I tell you, look at that emotion. He likes playing the hole. All net. The Cardinals have hit five of six free throws. And that's the difference in the game. Five-point lead, 14 to 9, Louisville. Out of bounds, cards get it back. 10 minutes, 42 seconds on the clock. Calls by the press, really getting after him, forcing him to speed his tempo up there a little bit, forcing him to throw it away. That's the sixth turnover for the 49ers of UNC Charlotte. Loyal has committed just three. There he is. He wants the basketball. He spread it out. They got Duvall on Hopgood. Bad 
pass by Brewer. Johnson was waiting to take it, and Kip Stone blocked it. Who's the foul? It's going to go on Brewer or Stone? I take your pick. Kip Stone. That's the fourth turnover, and those turnovers that the Cards are making. It remains Everett Sullivan, the only starter still on the court for U of L. Out of bounds, Cardinals basketball. As Williams could That's seven turnover there by the uh, 49ers. Uh, they really started to lose control there and throw the ball away. Coach Crum is staying with Everett quite a while here in this first half. Hopefully, I would think he's trying to give Everett some confidence and show him that, hey, I, I believe in you. Play basketball and have fun. Halfway through the first half, and Everett Sullivan's played every second of it. So far, he has not scored. Derwin Webb makes a move to the basket. Odom got a handle on it. They're going to give the basket to Webb. That's a good move by Webb. He really, uh, he's been around the basket. He's proven all year long. He, as his shooting per percentage also indicates, he can score the basketball around the basket. Louisville with its biggest lead of the night at 16 to 10. 9.50 mark first half. Freedom ball. And another foul. And they're going to put it on Hopgood. He does the rest. Bowley is back in, number 30, as Duvall leaves. Daryl Duvall, number four. Delano Johnson comes off the bench to average 10 points. He's got 46 steals this year. Oh, you can see why Johnson averages 10 points. He likes to shoot it. He might, he might get 100 if you play him the whole game. This guy is putting it up every time he gets it. It's 16 to 10. Louisville protecting a six-point lead. Their biggest to the first Here we go half. again. Lazy pass. Little Johnson jumping in the passing lane. He almost had another layup. And this one they do come up with. UNC Charlotte has the ball. Fifth turnover. Kip Stone. Uh, lazy pass there. He just telegraphed it. And there's no doubt when you're playing against a team that's as active as this basketball team, if you telegraph it, they're going to pick it off. You don't have to help them. They're quick enough. Charlotte, uh, UNC Charlotte turns it over, though, at the other end without getting a basket. So they are not gaining any ground on Louisville despite the turnovers. Eight to one run for the Cardinals over the last 434 in the first half. Sixteen to ten. Cardinals lead the 49ers. Metro Conference battle. UNCC unbeaten in the conference. Tied for the lead with Tulane. Louisville at three and three in conference play. You can see there, they're really sagging off, begging these guys to shoot the jump shot. I mean, they're just sagging back in their lane. And when you leave your feet like that, you're asking for trouble. I mean, these guys are set in a perfect position to draw a charge. So Webb gets another charging foul. That's number two on Derwin. Derwin's got to he's got to put in the brakes a little sooner. I mean that's the second time, and Derwin's been around here a while. He knows that these other teams they watch him play on tape, and they realize he likes to take the basketball to the basket. And he's got to be aware of that. Webb goes out with one uh, field goal and two points, and Morton is back in. Wayne Morton has scored two as Bolton. Well, like they talked about early, they really wanted to get something out of the front line. 16-11, Louisville with a five-point lead. Brewer kind of leans back and hits the shot. That's a big basket. Brewer's been really wanting to play more, and I think the best way to play more and to make the coach look at you is to make shots and make positive things happen on the court. That was a good move for him. James Brewer gives Louisville its biggest lead, 18 to 11, up by seven. Good switch, good switch, Martin and Stone. Terrell for three. Well, they haven't hit those threes. They don't yet. go in on the road like they do at home. Here's one by Brewer. There you go, Brewer. That kid wants to play more, and he's proven it tonight. He's off to a pretty good start. Five points for James Brewer. Ten-pointed lead for the Cardinals turnover. Third consecutive positive play by Brewer. He drew the charge. He caused him to step on that line. Brewer has really added some spark to this basketball team. It's a 10-point lead at the 8:15 mark. First half. Nine turnovers there already by the uh, 49ers. And the 49ers have yet to connect from three-point land. Louisville is hitting 50% of its threes. Kipstone for two. That one won't fall. And Terrell will clear the boards. Clock inside. Eight minutes in the first half. Dotton lost the handle on it. 
That's 10 turnovers, and we'll take a break. Timeout on the court. Louisville is leading by 10. This loss on UNC Charlotte. And of course, the Cards have already lost one to Tulane here on their home court. Well, now we see it. This is a big stretch for the Cards. This is the first time they had to face his own defense. And uh, we'll see if they're going to be executed, recognized, and play with confidence now. This has really been an Achilles heel for this basketball team all season long. And so here they go, attacking the zone. Troy Smith, and they work it around. Shot clock at 15. Loft inside, Troy Smith. There's another guy who's wanted to play more, but he just has not produced. His percentage is down from a year ago, and, and he's missed a lot of chippies around the basket. That was a big shot for Smith. 12-point Louisville lead. That's their biggest lead. Charlotte hadn't had a field goal in quite a while. I think probably about six minutes they hadn't had a field goal. Seven minutes going on. They got to get a basket. They hope to stay in this basketball game. So this crowd is excited. There's a foul. That'll turn it over. Let's check the AmeriCall scoreboard. AmeriCall, where every call means business. Tulane and South Florida meeting tonight in the Metro game. South Florida with advantage in the first half by two. Over in the Big Ten, Michigan State trailing Iowa by four at halftime. And Virginia Commonwealth with a two-point lead in the first half on Southern Mississippi. That's our AmeriCall scoreboard. AmeriCall, where every call means business. And this is Troy Smith. Troy struggled at the line this year where he's just hit 42%. But that gives the Cards a 13-point lead. Uh, now 14. I look for Mr. Terrell and uh, Mr. Johnson to start launching up some threes because these guys probably aren't having a lot of fun throwing the basketball into those big guys. The strength of this basketball team is shooting the three-point shot, and I look for these guys to start launching them here in a minute. Well, you've got three guys all shooting over 40% of their three-point shots. Williams, Terrell, and Johnson all in the court, on the court for UNC Charlotte. This is also the lineup that really caused us problems a week ago down at uh, UNC Charlotte. They spread the floor and they really utilize their split speed and quickness. Terrell draws a foul from Kip Stone. They're quick. I mean, these little guys can take the ball to the basket. If you're, if you're not down in a good proper defensive stance, you're going to catch yourself behind these three little guys. What would you imagine Denny Crum is discussing with Kip Stone after that play? Absolutely. Denny doesn't like you to take the, allow a guy to drive the basketball to the middle. He feels that you got better weak side help if you force him to drive the basketball to the baseline. And Kip didn't do his job that time. Here's Everett Sullivan re-entering the game. Everett is not taking him out. Yet. And Legree comes back in as Brewer sits down. That was a nice stretch of basketball for Brewer and Kip Stone. Neither one of those guys went out of the basketball game for anything they did wrong. They really picked the team up while they were in there. Well, James Terrell just got his first point of the game. That's amazing. He's averaging 15.4 a game. And here's Miner coming in. Morton goes out. Well, Mr. Terrell, he's following Coach's orders thus far in this basketball game and throwing it inside. He hadn't taken very many shots, and I look for him to start really trying to light it up. He and Williams. It's 25-13, Louisville by 13. Looking again at the Louisville run, a 17-4 spurt over the last 7-26. Good stretch of basketball, something we haven't had in the last week or so, week 10 days. These guys are really playing well. Minor to Legree. Well, that, there you can see a little tentativeness on, on the faces of the Cardinals. They are trying to recognize what defense they're in and what offense they should be running in order to score. That was the advised pass by Greg Miner. Cards turn it over. Confusion. You can see at that time down the court that something bad was going to happen. No confusion there. Terrell fires but misses. Sullivan launches it for Miner, and he mistimed it. Just a shade off. Pretty good pass by Everett Sullivan. Greg Manor took his eye off of it just a little bit and caused it to come out. The shot is up, and it is good. That's the second field goal for Williams. 25-15, 10-point lead. Louisville is up. 5-13 to go in the first half. Oh, 
surprising me, Coach Mullen took quite a while, I guess about 13 minutes to get into the zone defense, uh, considering the way Louisville has struggled against the zone defense this basketball season. Retrieved by Miner after Smith lost the handle. Shot clock at 10. They go to Holden. He's hammered, but no whistle now. A whistle, jump ball, possession arrow to Louisville. Louisville was lucky on that play that that was not a turnover because uh, Smith did not recognize the fact that he was not being guarded there at the high post. He just turned it automatically through the basketball and some kind of way it got through. Our next telecast coming up in just a couple of days on Strive to the Basket. From the basketball, so maybe they're, they're not doing their own thing and fouling uh, Johnson. <laughs> Knocked down two in a row that time. Well, he's a 64% shooter on the season from the line, not one of their best ones. 25-17, UNC Charlotte has cut the Louisville lead down now from 14 points to eight. Chief has got to just take the ball down there, get into the gaps and pass it around and take a shot. I mean, they start standing around and, and looking for someone else to, to make the decision for them. These guys have to trust their own judgment and make it happen. Johnson behind the back, Terrell, three, off the mark. They won't go in on the road, they, but I can tell you one thing, those guys, Terrell, Williams, and Johnson will keep shooting them. The home team, they'll knock them down. That's a big basket for Eric Sullivan. And it puts the lead back at 28 to 17, up to 11 points. 3.44 on the Here you go, these guys pushing it down doing what they feel they do best, taking the three. But like I stated early on, the three-point shot on the road just does not go down. They and go they, down for the home team. They are 0 for 4, the 49ers from three-point land. Louisville, meanwhile, has hit three out of five three-pointers. That's good for 60%. They got Johnson inside, and he missed the shot. Good weak side defense, good help. LaGree leads the break, flips it up, it won't go. As you see, you got Troy Smith and Cornelius Holden both crashing the offensive board that time. That's good, good anticipation on their part. Go after the ball. There it is, traveling called against Johnson as he hits the deck. That's their 12th turnover. Uh, two, I know, that were directly caused by James Brewer. And as you can see, James Brewer is back on the court because he made some good things happen when he was out there the first time. If you want to play more, make something happen, you'll get back in the basketball game. Little as biggest lead was 25-11. They are now leading 28-17. Guards with just eight turnovers in this first half. Three-minute mark. He's not looking at the basket. He's got to step up in there. Can he just throw the ball out? He's got to shoot it. That's one thing about the zone defense. You, it's only going to allow you one guy to be open, but that guy has to shoot the basketball. If not, that makes the zone defense look like it's doing a better job than it's really doing. Now the 49ers back in the front court. Two and a half minutes, first half. They trail Louisville and have almost this entire half. Now down by 11. Duval battling and can't get the shot to go. John Clockerty, the official tonight, along with Dan Chrisman and Mike Jag. Two twenty on the clock here in the first half. Freedom Hall. Terrell can't get the three to go so far. Holden hit a three tonight early in the game. That one will not fall, and a whistle foul on LaGree. You can't fault him for that, though. You look at there, the little guy down on the rail, his buddy that just went out of the basketball game. From Indianapolis, played at Ben Davis High School. Williams hits them both. And Derwin Webb are friends, both from Indianapolis. Brewer recovers and goes driving, and he's got the foul. He's got the foul. I mean, he wants to make some things happen. He's just being overly very aggressive, and good things are happening for him. That's good to see. He's got four points, two of them at the line, and a field goal. Louisville 30, UNC Charlotte 19, a minute 47 first half. There he goes again. I mean, this guy wants to play. 
Give him his playing time, Coach. This kid wants, wants to help this basketball team. He's really getting out there and giving a good effort. Six points for Brewer coming off the bench. 32 to 19, Louisville's biggest lead, 13 points. Against the press, they throw it over the head of Williams. I keep talking about it, but there's number 11 right there. When the ball goes out of, round, out of bounds, he's over there forcing another turnover. It really is an exciting thing to see a guy who's been buried down there on the bench not really get an opportunity to get an opportunity, and he's producing. The junior out of Bardstown, James Brewer, and Louisville by 13 at 32-19. 14 turnovers for the 49ers. That's a three by Everett Sullivan. Two three-pointers, six points in the first half. It's a totally different story than a week ago at the Charlotte Coliseum. When they're turning the basketball over 14 times, I'm sure Coach Mullins is going to have a lot to say about that at halftime. Williams kicks it to Duvall for the dunk. Duvall makes it a 14-point game. Quiet the crowd with an exclamation point. Dunking the basketball always puts everybody back in their seat. Nice pass by Williams. You see the clock. Less than 30 seconds to go. Shot clock is off. And the cards leading by 14. Oh, James Brewer is giving up so much of himself. He's exhausted over there, about to pull his shorts down. He's really holding on to him, but this guy's played hard this half. Holden, Sullivan for three. It didn't fall one second to go. Williams launches one off the iron. It is no good, and we go to the locker room. At the halftime break, Louisville 35, UNC Charlotte 21. The Very handedly. I'm sure he's going to try to get those other two guys to shoot the ball more this half. You see Williams, the leading scorer, 20 points a game, has scored but six. Johnson, three. And Terrell, the other one, the one that really beat the Cardinals a week ago, with just two points, and those came at the free throw line. Now you see what has happened historically under Coach Denny Crum at Freedom Hall. Derek, uh, it's a tough place to come in from out of town and win. Well, this time of year, especially, I mean, if you're going to come in here and get wins, it better be in November, December, but definitely not in February. As you see, they're 84 and 8 during the month of February under, under Denny Crown. Second half underway. Cardinals enjoying a 14 point lead at halftime, 16 points, their largest lead of the game. <laughs> Terrell's out waving his hand behind the three-point line. He's ready to start launching them. I can tell you that. Now hit four or five of those. You can close this game down and make it tight, but they throw it away. And taken away again by Wiley. Wiley and Miner go at it, and Greg Miner is going to get a foul called against him. His well, first. There's no reason for Greg to lose that basketball. He's a lot stronger than that. And he just let the guys just ticky-tack and snatch it right out of his hand. He's got to be tougher than that and hold on to that ball after making a great defensive play. Well, Clockerty and the other officials conferring over here. They give the ball to the University of Louisville. So the foul went against Wiley and not Miner. That's the first on Wiley. No scoring yet in the second half. Legree is hammered. There you see two guys of similar size. Legree uh, just overpowered him. He fouled him and he's he pretty close to put He's contributed so many ways. But once Keith continues to grow and work on his offensive game, shooting from the field and from the free throw line, he's just going to be an outstanding college basketball player because he does all the other things extremely well already. Williams on the drive and has the shot blocked out of bounds. The great athleticism of Dwayne Barton goes for a steal, gets behind the guy, still blocks the shot because he was relentless. There he comes. He's chasing him down from behind, knocks it out of bounds. That's great athleticism, something that this team has a lot of. They're telling Everett Sullivan, I think, to give him more room on the line. The crowd doesn't like to hear that. They like to see Everett pressure when he's getting all over the basketball. He's really jumping up and down, forcing him to throw it deep. 
Neither team has scored yet in the second half. We've played just over a minute. They go to Odom, and he's fouled by Holden on his back. That'll be two on Cornelius Holden. Holden with the three points in the first half on a three-point shot. Odom did not score. There you go, Holden. He should have gotten around in front that time. He kind of got caught on the guy's back. He's a big guy. Odom is a big, wide body, and he couldn't quite get around in front. He the foul. Here's Terrell. He drives on Morton, throws it up no good, and Holden grabs the rebound. The cards have been trailing in the board battle of the boards tonight. Shot opportunity. He's got to take the shot. There's nothing wrong with that. He's got to take the Holden. shot. And there you see Holden really fight. Holden was being hammered inside by Wiley. Wiley second. And that's the second team foul on the 49ers. Everett felt he got fouled on that last field goal attempt. He was over talking to both of the officials. Here comes Miner. Dishes off. Morton got it. Four points for Morton. First points of the second half, 37-31. I think he might have missed that one. The crowd really on the official's case there. Little Keith put in pressure and the ball appeared to go off the leg of Mr. Williams there. Here's Williams against LeGray over to Terrell. Dotton almost lost it to Minor. One thing you can see out there, those guys are really getting up playing aggressive defense switch there by LeGray and Minor. Forcing UAC to do a lot of things they don't want to do, like take the ball to the basket there. Williams, not one of his strengths. He likes to shoot the basketball, throwing a turnover. Threw it away, and it's 37-21. Louisville with the basketball. 17 and a half to go. Freedom Hall. Turner Turnovers. UNC Charlotte has doubled Louisville. Martin tried, but uh, was not able to save it. It was out of bounds. Took his eye off the basketball. Always got to look the ball into your hand when you're playing basketball or football or baseball, or whatever the sport may be. If it's thrown to you, look it into your hand first before you do something else with it. Terrell, one of those three-point sharpshooters with it. Over to Odom. Back to Williams. He'll take the three. Rebound Wiley. Now Odom. Wild shot by Odom, out of bounds, 49ers keep it. Well, you can see right there, they're getting hammered on the boards. Uh, Martin, Minor, Holden, they're allowing themselves to get pushed too far underneath by guys who are not that much bigger than they are, and that shouldn't happen. If they're going to blow this team out of here, they got to control the defense. Central High School, Kentucky's Mr. Basketball two years ago. The 49ers are really struggling. They've only made six field goals in the entire basketball game, making only two over the last 16 minutes and 40 seconds span They're really struggling to put the ball in the hole tonight yeah they're only six for 25 shooting from the field 24 percent field goal shooting they're not going to win many games shooting that poorly I, I mean look at the switching by every Sullivan and Dwayne Martin look at the weak side help by Camillion's hole that's outstanding when you got guys playing that hard on defense it makes it tough to put the ball in the basket I was going to say, Derek, it seems to me that the Cardinals' defense has a direct uh, result of the shooting percentage I mean, you're seeing from UNC. I mean, that's about a 10-foot run in which Holden went over to help one of his teammates out. That's outstanding defensive help. For three, that one is good by Johnson. Didn't look pretty. He's got an awkward-looking shot there, but it went down. That's a first three-pointer by the 49ers. Foul's going to go on Minor. So I think they got Dotton that time. He stepped out and tried to draw a charge, but the referee saw it the other way. And uh, the cars got it out under their basket. That's right. Dotton gets the foul, number three. That's his second. Cards up by 13. Everett's got a mismatch down inside. He should make that shot. And he does. Eight points for Everett Sullivan. 39-24. Oh. 
There's another one. Terrell, his first three. Well, that's six points in two trips down the court, and this is their strength, shooting the basketball from behind that three-point arc, not taking the basketball inside to those big guys. They've closed it to a 12-point lead. Cards have been up by 16. And we still have that mismatch down inside. Everett Sullivan should be able to catch the basketball at will over the little guy. I hear the call, said he stepped out of bounds, and the 49ers will get it. Coach Crum did not like that pass by Hosen. He felt that he forced it into Everett Sullivan. He wants Everett to get the basketball with the mismatch, but not if you have to force it to him. Johnson kind of dribbled off a knee. 39-27, Cardinals by 12. Go to the big guy, Odom, who drew Holden up in the air. Shot's no good, and I think Morton maybe get the foul here. That'll be three on Dwayne Morton. Oldham really used a good pump fake to get both Martin and Holden off their feet. And uh, when you get big guys off their feet around the basket, used to it. Well, he's been hitting them at a 56% clip this year. Looks like it. Big fella doesn't exactly look comfortable up there. He's got a lot of body movement, something that you don't want to have when you're shooting free throws. Well, he's one out of two, hits 50% of them, 39-28, Louisville by 11. Top good, matched in there with Odom down in the paint. There he is again. He's down there calling for the basketball. Mr. Hopgood, when he gets in the game, he feels it's his time to score. Go to Holden. So Denny Crumb's got the big lineup in there with Holden and Hopgood in the game at the same time. Here's Hopgood. And he got a shot up. Here come the 49ers with Johnson. Kicks it back. Terrell. Stutter step. Got it. Terrell with seven now. 39-30. Charlotte is on the move. 14-20 on the clock. Holden hits a uh, field goal. Five points for Cornelius Holden. 41-30. Louisville by 11. That's what a senior is supposed to do. When the team's getting ready to make a run uh, throughout this season, we've kind of fallen back and not taking the shots when they came open. Holden stepped right up and shot. Not looking at the scoreboard or the clock. So Holden has hit a three-pointer, and now this field goal. Duvall talking to the official. And Boley is coming in. That'll give us a chance to pause for our AmeriCall scoreboard. AmeriCall, where every call means business. Final score, Tulane has defeated South Florida in overtime, 78-70. Tulane 5-0 now in the Metro. And VCU by six in the second half over Southern Miss. And that's our AmeriCall, Scoreboard AmeriCall, where every call means business. 11 cars, points. You can hear the cars really hot and talking on defense. You can hear the same switch. Inside bowling. Oh I think Durham Webb take a shot, took a shot to the mouth. He's uh, down over there on the sideline, referee attending to him. Jeff Mullins uh, yelling at his team, crumb to his, while there's a bit of a stop in the action here like the nose. Dave, why there's a bit of stop here in the action. An old familiar face, not on the bench tonight, Jerry May, uh, getting ready to go under, underneath this knife and have a surgery. We'd like to say hello to him out there. That's right. Jerry May on Saturday morning will be having surgery for a artificial hip replacement. Wish Jerry the best. He'll be out of action for the Cardinals on that bench for about three weeks. Yeah, we kind of miss Roughhouse when he's not over there. Roughhouse, Jerry May, we're looking at you, buddy. Scramble on the court. Cards lead this 41 32. There are 13 minutes and 32 seconds in the game here at Freedom Hall. And these games at Freedom Hall become rather precious to the Cardinals. Uh, Sherry Simonick, by the way, will be taking uh, over the duties of trainer while Jerry May is on his leave of absence. She tends to Derwin Webb now. Hopgood. 
Tip didn't go. Johnson kicks it back. Williams nails a three. That's the strength of that basketball team. Taking it to the basket, but throwing it out to the three line. Having Williams just shoot the basketball with unbelievable confidence. It's down to six points now, the Cardinal lead. They were up by 14 at halftime. 35-21. Now it is 41-35. There have been three three-pointers in this half by the 49ers. Knocked out of bounds. Should be off Foley, and it'll be basketball to Louisville. That last play there, Kip Stone, he looked as if he was surprised that he got that open. When you put the basketball on the floor for more than one dribble, you, you just make it open, and he didn't look like he was ready to shoot that basketball. Cardinals protecting a six-point lead, 12.49 to go in the game. They go to Hopgood against Odom, and Odom fouls him. Rodney Odom, 6'11", sophomore, picks up his third, and that'll be the 15th foul. He kind of left the line that time. Coach Brown will be upset when he watches that shot on tape. Hobgood was running back on defense. It leaves the cards with a seven-point lead, 42-35, 12-28 on the clock. Here comes Terrell. Foley, he took steps, and they caught it. John Clockerty. Intimidation. One of the better shot blockers in the car's history. Cornelius Holden. Big guy saw him there, and he obviously must know who he's looking at because Corn would have knocked that one back. Jack Foley was a starter for the UNC last year. He's a senior and lost his job. Here's Stone missing, and Holden came over the back end. That'll be three on Cornelius Holden. The ball is on Holden, number 30, is third. So That's Holden and Morton, the two Cardinals with three fouls in trouble. Not a bad looking shot that time by Kip. He played with some confidence. He went over there and shot it, just didn't go down. He had to take that shot sometimes. A seven point lead is not a lot of a lead against the 49ers, the way they can fire three pointers. Out of bounds off the 49ers. We got a timeout on the court. We're going out of the Freedom Hall arena now, and it's a seven-point lead. Cards with the ball, 42-35. But the UNC Charlotte 49ers have heated up that three-point shooting. They've hit three three-pointers, Terrell, Williams, and Johnson. James Brewer just looked over and gave a wink. He's having a good time on the court. Holden is deadly from outside. He had missed. Well, actually, he's three out of five from the field in the game. He's hit three perimeter shots, and that's something we haven't seen much of, so it really looks like he's made them all when he makes three out there. Terrell over Brewer. Won't go. Save, but to Louisville. Pass to Stone is a good one. Nice pass by Everett Sullivan, recognizing he had a three-on-one break. Throwing the basketball to the perfect guy. Easy basket. And so a seven-point lead is back up now to 11. 46-35. Williams couldn't get the three off. Stone had him defense. Terrell will fire, and it's good. James Brewer and Kip Stone kind of got a little bit confused. Brewer thought that Stone would take him. No one took him, and that's what happened. We have a breakdown. That's 10 points now for Terrell. Hopgood over Foley. Won't go. Oh, tough luck for Hopgood. 46-38 Cardinals. Holding on to an eight-point lead. 10-12 to go in this game. Substitutes coming into the game. Jeff Mullins uh, has got both Foley and Odom in the game, two of his big men. Rod Hurst goes out. Wiley is in, along with Johnson, as Terrell will get the ball in the corner. This is the mismatch here. Holding out on the floor against Terrell. And he blocked it. Here's Brewer. 
Driving. Missed it. And a foul. James will want, he will take that one over again. I tell you, he took his eye off the basket. Looking at the defender, something you must never do when you're going to the basket is to take your eye off. Inside here it goes Hopgood. Kicks it back, Brewer. Back to Hopgood. He's open if he can get it up and in. He does. Hopgood's a smart offensive basketball player. He's realizing that that big guy's there, and now he's starting to give him a little bit of a pump fake. It's picked off by Brewer. Now oh, they got him double dribbled. Denny Crum really, really, really upset with that call. I think he has the right to be upset because you've got to have control of the basketball in, in order to double dribble with him. And I don't think he's got control of it right there. I don't think he had control of that basketball. Well, Crum looked at John Clockerty. Clockerty pointed at the official across the hall and said, hey, I didn't make that call. And he's, I'm reading this lip. He said fumble. He did not have control of that basketball. And so the 49ers down by 10 have the ball. 9.24 to go in this game. Dotton, he's wide right open. He's a guy that had the hot end in the first half. First points of the second half. Dotton with nine. Louisville's lead at eight. 48-40. 9.07. That's all that's left. After this, Louisville will play six of its last eight games on the road in the regular season. For three. Twelve points for James Brewer. Great pass by Cornelius Holden, recognizing that he was triple team, throwing the ball out to Brewer, who was wide open for the three. 51-40, 8-41 to go. The whistle blows. John Clockerty listening to Jeff Mullins give him an air pull. That didn't appear to be much of a foul if he's calling that one on Stone from behind. That's three on Kip Stone. I think Jeff Mullins has something to do with this call. Well, that didn't look like much of a foul there. Even the players were surprised to see him call it on that one. 49ers are trailing Louisville by 11. It's 51 48, 39 to go. Dotton against Sullivan. Four three pointers this half by the 49ers has kept a minute. Here's Johnson on Hopgood. Hopgood blocked it, and they're going to call Hopgood on the foul. That'll be the third on Brian Hopgood. Brian's going to have nightmares about that little Johnson guy jumping into his chest all night. That's about the third time he's had to face Mr. Hopgood there underneath the basket. There he is again. He's taking it. He pump fakes him. And Hopgood makes a good play. Don't make him. Don't let him score because this kid is a 64% free throw shooter. And he might not make him up there. He's five out of eight. 51-42, Louisville over UNC Charlotte. Cardinals trying to play the 49ers back for a loss in Charlotte last week, and Odom is, or rather Foley, gets the foul against uh, going against Hopkins. Sure is a nice thing this big guy didn't decide to register because he is really giving the cards a live uh, through the last 10-12 basketball game. He's getting more confidence by by each game and he's really scoring the ball. He's got nine points, 53 to 42. Louisville. Johnson, it's out of bounds. UNC Charlotte's ball. We got a timeout on the court. Seven for and Hopgood. Those two guys, two wanted to get out there and play more, and they're doing a good job out there on the offensive end. Oh Dotton now with 11 points. That's the second time that Carson got burned and, and allowed Dotton to slip right underneath the basket. It should be automatic. Whenever two guys fall, you should switch when you're in your car system. David Sullivan and Derek Smith with you here, live from Freedom Hall, 7.37 to go. Louisville has had the lead most of the way in this game. UNC Charlotte had one lead briefly in the first half. They 
have hot good pulled out to the top and now knocked away, but Loyola will keep it. I, I, I think we should uh, give Evan Sullivan a look. He's uh, getting himself down inside with Williams starting him. He's got quite a size advantage over Williams. Williams knocked it away. Call it swing him. I look for that to go to uh, Evan Sullivan. No, he's going for Hopgood, swinging for Hopgood. For three. That better go in because that's not swing him. Swing him as to get the basketball inside, but Brewers is really feeling it tonight, and he's taking the shots when he's open. He's uh, hit two three-pointers in the second half. There's a foul. They're going to give it to Everett Sullivan. That'll be his first. That's what you call confidence. When a coach calls a play from the sideline, you're open, you shoot it. Live with it. Looking to get it into hop good. Ball's out to Brewer. He knows he's filling it tonight. And he just takes a shot and says, Coach, this is my night. 15 points for James Brewer. He is having a night. Five out of seven from the field. Two for two from the free throw line. Williams lofts it up and in. That's a mistake by Everett. Allowing the guy to drive middle. Knowing that this little guy is a penetrator, you just can't let him go in the middle, especially in the scheme of things around here. Don't allow him to go to the middle. Hop good to go back to the free throw line. He spent a lot of time there tonight. There he is, Hop good moving around. Got to give him attention. When a guy comes into a game shooting 68%, you got to be aware of him moving around. And UNC Charlotte, they're having their hands still keeping this big guy from just laying them in. Hopgood has hit two out of four field goals and five out of six free throws. Goes to the line with nine points trying to hit double figures. He's been there a few times in double figures this season. Better be careful. He backed away from that line again. He cost himself a free throw early in the basketball game, recently releasing it and backing away. He stayed there that time, and it still didn't go down. 57 to 46, Louisville. <laughs> Terrell has to force a shot. Excellent defense by Kip Stone. Six-minute mark coming up here in this game at Freedom Hall. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be Louisville's basketball. Coach Plum trying to get Hopgood to set a pick before he turns around and post. Hopgood's eager to get the basketball, but there's a responsibility on his part to free Everett Sullivan up when he's coming off that pick first. Here we go again. We'll see if Hot's going to set a pick. There he is. Didn't do it that time either, but I'm sure Coach Palmer worked on that with Big Brown. Hop good. There he is. Hop good. 12 points for the game. He likes scoring. But get out of that pick and stuff, Coach. 13-point <laughs> advantage for the Cardinals. 59 to 46. 5.32 to go. Johnson to Odom, and Odom gets his first basket of the game and fourth point. Pretty nice move Third by Odom. 59-48, Louisville by 11. Odom will fire it. I think that's the first one he's missed from outside. Williams. That is an athletic play by Reed. The middle guy just hanging in the air, taking a tip, making a tip attempt like that. That was really a nice athletic play. That's the fourth foul on Brian Hopgood. One area in which Brian's going to have to make strides on in order to get more playing time is on the defensive end. He commits a lot of fouls, but when he gets the experience, I think he'll know how to stay away from the fouls. Well, Hopgood will get a few words from Coach Crum. He's got 12 points. Crum fake him, get fouled, and score a couple of baskets. Oh. 
59-49. We've got a 10-point game. Five or 4.54 to go as we move inside. Five minutes left in this basketball game. Brewer for two. Well, he's got a really nice rhythm going. Get him the basketball. He's filling it up tonight. He's hit six of nine from outside. He's got 17 points. And playing equally as good defense. I mean, this kid is really having himself a game. Williams over to Johnson. Back to Williams. For two. That was a two-pointer, but he's going to start looking to get the three-point shots up with four minutes to go in the basketball game down by 10. Look for UNC Shaw to really start launching threes here in a minute. Williams has 13 points. He's averaging 20. It's a 10-point lead, 61-51. The clock down to the four-minute mark. Troy Smith is going to draw the foul from Bowling. And that'll be four on Jack Bowling. Three minutes. Every Sullivan getting in there, crashing on the offensive board. They almost got him a tip in. Brewer gets the foul. That's uh, number one on Brewer. And Odom clears the board. Williams misses for three. It's no good. And Sullivan for the rebound. Everett's doing a good job on the board. That's one area in which he's had a pretty good year in, averaging over four rebounds a game. And uh, he's been really solid on the board all year long. Fox says three and a half minutes to go. Gipstone, what a pass. What a pass, Bowling. yes. Great pass, but the people come to see guys play above the rim. Great athletic ability by Canadians Holden. Cards by 12. Williams fall away. He's hot. That's a nice shot, but he looked like he might have gotten away with a little bit of a push off there on the baseline. 15 now for Williams. He's keeping it within 10 with three minutes and seven seconds to go. Williams foul as he knocks the ball away from the back of Everett Sullivan. Henry Williams, who played at Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis at 18 against U of L in Charlotte last week. Here's Everett Sullivan going to the line. Well, it's time for the cars to make some free throws. They've struggled at the line all season long, but I think this team with confidence should walk up there and knock them down, especially you've seen you. guys like Everett Sullivan, who's been there so many times before. Everett's hitting 71%. There you go, Eddie. And he has hit them all in the game tonight. The cards have hit 13 of their free throws out of 20 shots. Of the three Michigan State has lost tonight to Iowa in the Big Ten in an upset. And VCU with four minutes left leading Southern Mississippi. And that's a surprise. Everett Sullivan cleans the boards with 2.48 to show on the clock. Everett's playing back there, giving the big guys some help on the board. Oh, just over two and a half minutes left to go here at Freedom Hall. And Louisville with a 12-point lead over UNC Charlotte. Offensive foul. John Clockerty makes it a very forceful call. And it's on Everett Sullivan. Tough break for Everett. He felt that he's been open a couple of times down there with the smaller guy playing him. That's just one of those things that happened. He got his arms up a little bit high, and the referee interpreted that to be a foul. That's one of those calls that could go either way. There he is. He's flashing in. You didn't see it, but he flashed in there, and the guy thought he might have got his arm a little too high. This is Bershawn Thompson coming off the bench. He only averages about a point a, year, a game. Hadn't played much. Started last year for the 49ers. Not a bad idea to fire those guys who've been on the bench all night. Ice cold. It's a tough building to shoot free throws in, especially under those circumstances. And a timeout on the court. There are two minutes and Kip Stone, two for two at the line tonight. The Cardinals 16 of 22 in free throws. 
they're going to have to keep making them because this team's going to be very, very aggressive in the next two, two minutes and eight seconds trying to go after steals and get the basketball back so they can score some points. 14-point Louisville lead, just over two minutes to go, two minutes and six seconds. Williams drives all the way down and scores. He's a top scorer. He's an NBA player. This kid, Williams, is definitely going to be a, a player that can, can make a living up there for a while. So he's got a lot of twos. Brewer now with 19 points. What a night for James Brewer. Thompson for three. He nailed it. That's a deep three from the, the NBA three-point line. And timeout with 127 to go. James Brewer with 19 points. That's a season high for Brewer. Well, James has been a little bit concerned about his playing time from game to game. I don't think he has anything to worry about coming into Saturday afternoon basketball game against Xavier because he's definitely proved that he's ready to play basketball. He had 16 points against LSU. He's got 19 tonight. He can rest easy the next couple of days because he will definitely be in the basketball game up at XU. He's 0 for 2 from the field, 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Coach Crum has, has had an opportunity tonight to rest some of those younger guys in Martin and Minor and, and the three because he's gotten production, tremendous production from some of the older guys, in particular Brewer, Sullivan, and Holden. 71-58, Delano Johnson misses the driving shot. Level by 13, foul on Delano Johnson. The eighth. I think he's one of those guys that it really doesn't matter whether he scores or not. He's a, he's a winner. He just wants to win basketball games. Terrell, timeout. So Terrell hits the base on Louisville that would be the people to foul. Here's Stone. Keep the floor spread. You don't want to get fouled at this point in the game. You just want to run the clock out. And they can do that if they keep the floor spread. Floor spread. Delano Johnson yelling, why, why not call a foul? I smacked him on the move arm. It, move the basketball. You don't want him to catch up to you. Play, it's like getting away when you're playing tag. Keep the ball moving. They can't get you. They can't foul you. Odom fouled out of the game to stop it with 31 seconds. And Odom goes out of the game with four points. That'll bring Bowley back off the bench and into the game. Williams with it as the clock moves. There's a three. Nice play to save it by Williams. That's a three-pointer. Williams now with 20. At the buzzer. It's no good. The ball game is over, and Louisville 